All right, welcome back. And this is part two of continuation of section 9.6, where we are translating class find conic section. Uh, beforehand, we talked about the different uh, positionings uh, in the general um, equations and variables placed for um, different uh, components in each conic section. So, excuse me, in this in this section, we are going to uh, be able to uh, write equations uh, that are from translated center points or uh, vertexes. And then uh, we're also going to get into uh, the classifications of the conic sections. So, so let's get into the examples. So first off, we were going to write an equation of a conic section that describes the following information. So A says that we have a circle. And it says with center points negative 5, 6, and a radius of the square root of 11. It's pretty easy to uh, write out this because all we need is the center point, And we were given that. And we also need the radius, in which is that's what we're given. So when we go to the general equation, it's going to be x plus 5 quantity squared plus y minus 6 quantity squared equals, and then it's this is r squared, so the square, the square root of 11, um, squaring that is just going to give me 11. So finding equations for the circle is not too bad. Uh, for b, I have to write an equation for an ellipse with uh, foci at points 3, comma 5 and 3, comma negative 1, and covertices at 1, comma 2, and 5, comma 2. So kind of helps out to maybe like visualize this through the graph. So it tells us that it's at uh, 3, comma 5. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's somewhere right around here. And then 3, comma, negative 1. So it's somewhere right around here. And our co-vertices are at 1, comma, 2. And we said what, 5 comma 2, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so something like this. And what they don't tell us is what A is. So we know what, so this is, helps us for B, and this helps us with C. So from here, we'll make a line, and I need to find what the center point is. And the center point of this is at 3, comma 2. So when I'm writing this equation, I'm going to have, it's an ellipse, so the only thing that changes is uh, the positioning of a squared and b squared on the bottom. So I'm going to have x minus 3 quantity squared plus y minus 2 quantity squared, something equals 1. All I need to find is what my a squared and b squared are. So I'm going to count. I know that C is at 1, 2, 3. So I know that C equals 3. I know that the value for B equals 2. So I know that this is a hot dog ellipse. So B squared will be right here. So B squared is 4. So now to find A, I can use c squared, which is 9, equals a squared minus 4, and subtract 4, or add 4 to both sides, I'm sorry, and that'll give me 13 equals a squared. So the value here is going to be 13. And that's the equation. For c, I have a parabola with a focus at 4 comma 1 in a directrix at y equals negative 5. So if I look at it that through a graph, I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So there's my directrix. And then it says 1, 2, 3, 4. 
and then one so this is the positioning of my focus so what we're told and what I know is the positioning from here to here the halfway point is where our vertex is so let me get rid of that line so so if I know that it is one, two, three, four, five, six units away, so all I have to move is three units away from both of them, both the focus and the directory to find my vertex. So I'm going to go one, two, three. So at point four comma negative two is the point for my vertex. Four comma negative two is my vertex. So it looks like it's going to open up this way because it's always in line with my or the inside of my parabola uh, has my focus and that means that P in this case equals 3 so I'm going to use and it's up and down so it's going to be X minus 4 quantity squared equals and it's going to be 4 P so P is 3 so that's going to be 12 times the quantity Y plus T last one in these examples is the hyperbola with vertices at 3 comma 0 and 3 comma negative 4 and foci at 3 comma negative 2 minus the square root of 7 and 3 comma negative 2 plus the square root of 7. So if I look at this on the graph I look at, so I'm going to have one vertice at three comes or so, one, two, three, so one's going to be right here, and I have another vertice at three comma negative four, so I'm going to go one, two, three, four, so it looks something like this, so that means that it's going to open up like this, and it's going to open up like that, so what that means is, is we're going to have a vertical, vertical hyperbola. So with the vertical hyperbola, that means that my y value is going to be in front, and that's what changes. A and B do not change. So, let's see here, we have, I'm going to look for my center point here, and it looks like the center point is at 3 comma negative 2. So when I'm writing this equation, I'm going to have y, this one's going to be plus 2 quantity squared. And I see here, a is 2 in this case. So that means it's going to be over 4 minus x minus 3 quantity squared all over, I'm not sure what b is, so I'm going to say equals 1. So what I know is that, but then I also know that my foci here is at 3 comma negative, so that's somewhere right around here, and I would say right around here. But if, so I know that C is negative, or this would be what, 2 square root of 7 as a decimal. Um, is roughly 2.6 so if I just said 2.6 plus 2 it gives me about 4.6 and if I go uh, if I were to square that it would be 7 so 4.6 squared be what 21.16 so I'm gonna say 21.16 equals 4 plus b squared so I'm gonna go 21.16 minus 4 so I know that my b squared here is going to be about 17.16 so that's what I'll write down here excuse me and that's how the, that equation is written. Okay. Uh, another thing that we're going to look at is determining lines of symmetry. So some conic sections have more 
than one line of symmetry. And uh, I'll show you what that is. So if we look at um, example A, I have y plus 1 quantity squared equals uh, 8 times quantity x minus 4. Because I have my x as the square, that means it's going to be a right to left parabola. And because it's a positive, it's going to be positioned to the right. So this one has a vertex point at negative 1, 4. So it's kind of positioned right here. So it's going to be positioned something like this. And line of symmetry is when you cut this, uh, this piece in half, you're going to uh, determine that you have a lot. Oh, I'm sorry, this is wrong. I messed up. My bad. This should be at 4 comma 1, negative 1. My bad. Sorry about that. So this should be at 1, 2, 3, 4, negative. So it should be something like this. Sorry about that. And if you were to cut this in half, you could you have two equal pieces. So if you like say if you took it and folded it together, it would be exactly the same. That's what lines of symmetry are. Uh, for parabolas, there's only one because you can't cut it in half like that to get the same thing. And what it is is this one here is going to be at y equals a negative one. So sometimes drawing it does help. Uh, for B, I have x minus 10 quantity squared plus y plus 7 quantity squared equals 121. When you're dealing with circles, any point as long as it's at the center point does make a line of symmetry. So when you're dealing with circles, all you have to say for line of symmetry is says any line that passes through the center point and this center point happens to be 10 comma negative 7. For C, this is an ellipse and this happens to be a, since this is my A squared and this is my B squared, my A squared is larger so it's going to be a hot dog ellipse and it's going to be at negative 1 comma 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. <coughs> Excuse me. Cut kind of something like this. So this has two lines of symmetry. You can go cut it here and you can cut it here. And those two lines are dictated at x equals negative 1 and y equals a positive 5. And as you notice, it shows by the shifting of our x and y uh, translation. Okay. Uh, the last thing we're going to talk about is classifying conic sections and uh, using their equations. So if you look at here, this is the general equation for any conic section. We can make any conic section uh, from this general equation. You, uh, you don't see all those values in the conic sections because uh, our coefficients a, b, c, d, or e, or f, whatever they may be, um, are zero. And so, but when they're zero or when they're not zero, uh, create a specific uh, conic section that helps us uh, determine which of the four they are. And how you can determine that is by using the discriminant from our uh, quadratic equation. That's the values that are inside that square root the the square you know b squared minus 4ac you know from the quad from the quadratic formula and being able to use the the discriminant uh, we can tell whether it's a circle ellipse parabola hyperbola by identifying these um, these things so if if it is great if our discriminant is gr uh, less than zero and b equals zero and a equals c then it's a circle if it's less than zero and neither and b does not equal zero or a does not equal c then it's an ellipse <coughs> excuse me um if 
our discriminant equals zero, it's a parabola. Or if our discriminant is greater than zero, then it's hyperbola. Um, another quick note is b equaling zero. Each of our axes has a uh, conic, uh, horizontal, or vertical um, positioning. So that means it's not on a tilt. And so at this point, that's all we've been working with. So our usually our b will be zero. So from here, they want us to classify the conic sections with the equation in standard form, and then they want us to graph it. But what I I told you guys I didn't really need you guys to graph it. I'm just I'm more curious on you guys finding out the process. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete these graphs so I can show you how we solve these problems. So I got ace. Um, for example, a I got. Um, x squared plus 4y squared minus 10x plus 16y plus 37 equals 0. So from here, I need to use the discriminant, so I need to find what a is. a here equals 1, b here equals 0, and c here equals 4, using the values from up here. So if I use the discriminant, I'm going to go 0 minus 4 times 1 times 4, which will give me a negative 16. <coughs> and it is less than 0. And A does not equal C. So it, this is an ellipse. So since I know it's an ellipse, I can go about solving it. So figuring out how to put it in standard form for an ellipse, the first step I have to do is I have to get all my x values kind of together and all my y values together and then put my constant on the other side of the equal sign. So I'm going to do that right here. So I got x squared minus 10x plus 4y squared plus 16y equals a negative 37. Now what I need you to do is we're going to look at each of the values of, of the x's and the y's separately. All I want to do is I want to factor out a the constant values. I don't want to factor out anything with the variables. So I can't factor anything out of my x's, so I'm just going to leave that as a 1. And on the outside, I'm going to have x squared minus 10x. Plus, I have, I can factor out a 4. So this becomes y squared plus 4y. <coughs> Excuse me, equals a negative 37. So from here, the next step is inside those parentheses, I want to do, I want to complete the square. So here, this is when we use that equation. I'll write it down here. x squared plus bx plus b over 2 quantity squared ends up equaling the square root of binomial x plus b over 2 quantity squared. Okay. So for the x one, b is, is uh, negative 10. So this is going to be 1 times quantity x squared minus 10x. And... So that gave me what, negative 5, negative 5 squared is going to be plus 25, plus 4. And now I deal with the, my, the y parentheses. B is 4, so I got y squared plus 4y. And that means b over 2 quantity squared, that's going to leave me with another 4. Equals a negative 37. But because I added a 25 and I added a 4, this is where these outside values... <coughs> are going to help you. So I'm going to plus, I have a 1 on the outside of my x, so it's 1 times 25, which I, that's what I added here, and it's going to be a plus 4 times 4. So whatever value you have on the outside, you just attach it to the value uh, in the, um, on the other side of the equal sign. So from here, I, I want to get 
this and this to look like this. So I know that I can write this as a square of a binomial. So this is going to become x minus 5 quantity squared plus 4 times the quantity y plus 2 quantity squared equals. And if I add all these up together, I'm going to get a positive 4. So now I need to get this to be 1, so I'm going to go divide this by 4, divide this by 4, divide this by 4. So <coughs> if I simplify, I'll go x minus 5 quarter squared over 4 plus y plus 2 quantity squared, it's over 1, and then all of this equals 1. So this is the equation for the ellipse that we're looking for. Okay. For B, I need to find what A, B, and C are to classify it. So it's 1, 0, and 0. So I got 0 minus 4 times 1 times 0, which equals 0. And from the chart, it tells me that this is going to be a parabola. <coughs> Alright, so, again, same thing. Classify both the x squared minus 14x minus 9y, and then put the coefficient, or the, not the coefficient, but the constant on the other side. So, can't factor anything out of x, so just 1. So I put x squared minus 14x, and I put minus 9y equals a negative 22. And here, so I want to make this a perfect square trinomial on the inside of that x, so it's going to be 1, so it's going to be x squared minus 14x. That makes b14. Divided by 2 is 7. 7 squared is not 49. Minus 9y. Can't do anything with that. So it's negative 2 plus it's 1 times 49, so just 49. And so this one, I'm going to make it into a square of a binomial. So this is going to be x minus 7 quantity squared minus 9y equals... 27. So now I'm going to add the 9y to both sides. So now I get x minus 7 quantity squared equals 9y plus 27. On the right hand side, I can factor out a 9. So I can say that it's x minus 7 quantity squared equals 9 over y plus 3. And that's my equation for my parabola. My vertex would be at, uh, what, 7 comma negative 3. And there you go. Last one. Last one. So I have to find A, B, and C. A is 8. B is 0. And C is a negative 25. So I got 0 minus 4 times 8 times negative 25. That's going to give me 800. And it's greater than 0, so it's a hyperbola. So going into solving that, same thing. Get my x's together, get my y's together, put my constant on the other side. So I got 8x squared plus 32x minus 25y squared plus 150y equals 393. So I need to factor out things with the x's and the y's. So I can factor out an 8. So it's x squared plus, so that'd be what, 4? Then minus, I can 
take out a 25 here. So this becomes y squared. We got negative. But this has to be a minus. This would be what? 6. 6y equals 393. So now from here I can make a need to make a perfect square trinomial, so I need to complete the square out of both of these, so it becomes 8 over x squared plus 4x, so b is 4, b divided by 2 is 2, b over 2 squared would give me a plus 4, minus 25 over y squared minus 6, so 6 is b, b divided by 2 is 3, 3 squared is 9, plus 9, so that means I get equals 393, and then I go plus 8 times 4, and then I got minus 25 times 9. So from here, I got I can make this, I got 8 over x plus 2 quantity squared, minus 25 y minus 3 quantity squared equals, so negative 25 times 9 equals a negative 225 so I go plus 32 plus 393 so that gives me 200 so now I need to get, divide everything out 200 so becomes what x plus 2 quantity squared over 25 minus uh, y minus 3 quantity squared divided by what would be what, 8 equals 1 and there you go and that is being able to translate in class by conic sections Hope this helps. Until next time.